Living Corporate is brought to you by The Leadership Range, a podcast within the Living Corporate Network, hosted by globally certified and Fortune 500 executive coach and leadership development expert Neil Edwards. The Leadership Range is focused on having real, raw, soulful and accountable conversations about inclusive leadership, allyship, professional development. Every week is a new episode with new learning and new actions to take on to grow inclusively. Make sure you check out The Leadership Range everywhere you listen to podcasts. Hey, everybody. Uh, Welcome to the Access Point. Uh, This is a live broadcast, part of the Living Corporate Network. Access Point is our weekly web show where we strive to bring y'all real talk, like the real deal, uh, to help you prepare for life after college and making transitions in the workforce. While our content is for everyone, uh, we are mostly focused on preparing black and brown students for the future of work. So every week we feature an incredible guest to help us discuss the topic at hand. This week we're talking about creating professional boundaries, doing that effectively, and we have a special guest, uh, Kristen Taylor. So Kristen, tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and why you said yes to the Access Point invitation. Sure, definitely I wanna um, thank you all for just having me here today. Um, My name is Kristen Renee Taylor. I'm originally from New Orleans, Louisiana. I currently work for Ingenious Med as an applications analyst. Um, the company is pretty much a medical software company where we actually build a application for doctors and providers and also hospitals, hospitalists to actually input charges. I'm a graduate at Tulane University in computer engineering and business. Um, and also I am a region five advisor for the National Society of Black Engineers. Awesome, thank you, Kristen. I'm pumped mm-hmm. to talk to you. Um, I shared a little bit before we went live, but I, uh, have no hardcore STEM background. I was a humanities and art girl uh, turned career coach and uh, talent development consultant. So I'm excited to talk about all the things related to career life, how to integrate those things. I think that's top of mind uh, for a lot of my clients, but it's top of mind for everyone, especially in this season, uh, just creating boundaries around what you do, how you do it. And it can be really hard to do that. I know right out of college or right out of school, because you're just trying to soak it all up. So first question, sure. for college students and early graduates who are getting started on assessing what a healthy boundary looks like in a professional context, what are the most common mistakes that people make with regard to setting and maintain, maintaining boundaries? Um, the one thing that I learned as I uh, grew into my career is that everybody's not your friend. Um, everybody is not for you. Everybody is not Um, against you. But at the same time, you need to understand how to set those boundaries accordingly. But at the same time, keep in mind that everyone is not your friend. Um, You have people that are, you know, thinking, oh, we want her to fail. But at the same time, you do have your biggest cheerleaders that want you to actually be a part of their organization as well. So the one thing that I've learned and the one thing that I encourage other individuals is definitely take time to think about your career and how you can develop yourself. But at the same time, remember that everyone that is that is working with you is not your friend. Ooh, that's a hard one. <laughs> uh, I think I read somewhere that uh, millennial, well, Gen Z, really we're on Gen Z now, uh, really want to work in a place where they see a lot of value uh, in terms of the organization's mission, but also mm-hmm. work in a place where they can build effectively friendships with other right. people. So exactly. that, that's a really good one. That's hard. Like how do you be friendly, yeah. but not be friends or get, right. friends, you know? Exactly. All right. So what happens when people don't move with intention around creating those boundaries? Like they maybe they, they, maybe they do step into the workplace and they try to befriend everyone early. What happens? What can go wrong? So the one thing that, that I picked up with, with what can go wrong fact that many people, when you become that friendly person, they kind of take advantage of other individuals. Um, They'll be like, well, that's my friend. So that friend is going to go out with me. Or say, for example, you go out with a friend after you go out, go to work. There are certain boundaries that you have to put in place with that. So you want to be careful with that, quote unquote, friendship that you make with that person. You don't want to be too friendly with that person, because keep in mind that um, you're representing a company as well as representing your 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 family as well. Um, the one thing that I've learned in my career is the fact that I have a lot of colleagues that like to go out after work. 
Um, mm -hmm. When you're in college, you have a lot of colleagues that like to go out maybe after an exam and celebrate. We have to keep in mind that we have to keep um, ourselves maintained and keep ourselves as representations of the company and of the school that we're attending as well. That's 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 deep. And it's easy to forget that, I think, in the age of social media, mm -hmm. because sometimes professionals wear multiple hats. So you yes. represent the organization that pays you, but maybe you have another side job. Maybe you mm -hmm. run business. You know, I think sometimes those lines can get really muddled. Definitely. Um, and it's definitely hard to back check. Right. Okay. And I want to say one more thing on um, when you said about social media, I think it's really important that you have to keep in mind that somebody's always watching you. Someone always has a phone that has a camera on it. So you have to definitely keep in mind that, hey, if I take this drink or if I do something that is not correct, is that going to be on social media? And is everybody going to be able to see it? I know a lot of people say that when people, uh, when co collegiate students apply for jobs, the first thing that a lot of uh a lot of companies look at is their Facebook page, is their Instagram page to see what is out there. And so that that definitely is a, a, a key element on when you're actually hiring someone. Mm -hmm. That's huge. That's and huge. I think especially in college, I have seen some college students really get stuck when they start interviewing or interning in certain industries because right. it might be common to drink a little more. Yes. <laughs> they might, you know, they might be getting a little, you know, they might get a little test. Yes. Uh, they might feel pressure to do something that's not them to feel like they fit in. So what recommendations would you have for people who, you know, are of age and want to have a beverage in there on the clock? Is mm -hmm. there a way to do that appropriately, do you think? Um, the one thing that, that I've always been taught, and like I said before we got, got on live, my father is a military man. And um, mm -hmm. that's all I've been taught. And so when it comes down to me representing myself, I always think about representing my parents. So if I make a mistake or if I do something that is not supposed to be um, according to their rules or something that is going to be representation of them, I don't partake in that. Um, the one thing that I do when it comes down to going out with my colleagues, I don't drink. I don't engage in any kind of any kind of thing that will actually put me at risk, because at the same time, these are my coworkers. These aren't my my family. So they really don't know me personally, but my family knows me. So I really want to I really would not want to put myself in that position at all. Yeah, that's huge. That risk factor is huge when you're talking about boundaries, because I think, you know, there's a whole gamut of do you know, do you know how drinking affects you in the first place? Exactly. Is it something that's necessary? Where are you? What's the context? How long are you going to be there? Right. But yeah. at, the bottom, at the end of it, you know, risk of reputation is what I'm hearing you say mm -hmm. um, and risk possibly a personal safety, too. Yes. Right. Exactly. So, OK. Yep. Um, can you share an example of a time that you saw a colleague um, or a friend set and maintain really good boundaries at work? Yeah, definitely. Um, I actually work with um, a colleague of mine that is actually close in age to me. Um, I'm 37. I know I don't look like it. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, she's very close in age to me. And so in one situation where we actually went out as a um, a, a a launch party for our the, the particular department, we actually went out after. And so she was engaging in some alcoholic substance at that time. So I advised her, I said, hey, you might want to slow down just a little bit. You know, you don't really know these people a lot or whatnot. But she really took my advice and she was like, OK, let me just slow down. And then in other situations where we actually had a, a team um, outing, she didn't partake in those um, alcoholic beverages because she learned from her past experience. Hey, let me not engage in that because I really don't know these people. So. That's huge. That's huge. It's it's uh I will say, you know, like I said at the beginning, the show is for everybody, but we're focused on black and brown folks. Yes. And there is conversation that people have about you sort of professional, like navigating professional spaces. There's sort of a popular line. But I do think that there are nuances to this as, as in terms of us. Mm -hmm. Right. Like there are things that you might not bounce back from. Right. We might not bounce back. And we already know that we have to in a lot of cases. Uh, work twice as hard, uh, be on our P's and Q's. I would really love to say that we are in a society or we're in a time where we're past all that. People can be who they are, what they want to be. We can to a degree, but right. again, you know, like you said, I wrote it down. You're like, keep in mind, you represent your organization. Yes. Yes. Uh, so mind the business that pays you. Right. Exactly. And the one thing that I learned is um, and we we're not a, a fraternity or a sorority, Nesby, the National Society of Black Engineers. 
But when we wear our quote unquote letters, or mm -hmm. when we're in a, if someone is in a sorority or a fraternity, when we are wearing something that says our organization's name, we do not partake in alcoholic beverages because at the same time, you have to think about it. There's like, wait a minute, Kristen's a Nesby member. Why is she drinking? You know, our mission is to increase the number of, of culturally responsible black engineers who excel academically, succeed professionally, and positively impact the community. So that last part with positively impacting the community, I don't think that is a good look when you're drinking a beverage that is full with alcohol, you know? So, yeah. that's, I didn't know that about your organization. So it's good to hear that. That's deep. Mm -hmm. I've definitely yeah. heard that about Greek organization. So yeah. that's awesome. I mean, that's a really serious code of conduct Yes. Um, to think about, you know, even in our 30s, I'm 35. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we we really do have to think about that stuff. And yeah. I think us, you know, especially for college students, mm -hmm. I, I remember being in high school ready to go to college because it's like, mm -hmm. free, be, you know, you do what you want to do. Right. And then in college, you're like, OK, I'm ready to get out. Freedom. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we really have to redefine what that really means. Right. And for me, I think a lot about having our own agency, you know, not, mm -hmm. not fumbling the bag because of our behavior. We have enough things we have to circumvent out here. That right. Is <laughs> So that's good. I really, that's great. It's good to hear that about your organization. Yes, ma'am. Um, okay. In your experience, is there a such thing as too many boundaries or mm. network? Does that exist? What does that look like? I don't think it exists for me personally, because you can never be too safe. You can never be too cautious because you want to make sure that you're protecting yourself. I know growing up as a young, as a little girl, I used to be shy. Like I would never talk to people. You know, I just I didn't communicate with ind individuals. But when I stepped up, stepped foot on Tulane University's campus, I would be the the know it girl, or they know you, or they know me, or so on and so forth. When I got into Nesby, I got this nickname. I'm not sure if you saw this in my um, introduction. They call me CT. They don't call me Kristen. You know, when somebody introduces me, they'll be like, oh, that's CT. That's not, they don't call me Kristen. Okay. So I think it's really important that you keep yourself um, aware of what's important and know your values and know what's important to you. Because at the end of the day, you have to take care of you. Nobody else can take care of yourself. You can't take care of anybody else but yourself. So you want to make sure that you have an understanding of what you want and what those boundaries are and what it takes to get to that level. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So tell me a little bit about, like, I imagine in your professional journey, you meet folks um, either on your team or cross-functionally or, or in, you know, professional organization spheres mm -hmm. where you do cultivate uh, relationships that are maybe not friends, but they're friendly. So what does that look like? Uh, how do you kind of describe networking like, you know, I think a lot of times college students think about networking in terms of looking for a job. That's but as you move throughout your profession, you're always networking and building your network. So can you exactly. talk a bit about what that looks like and how you facilitate that uh, while also maintaining boundaries? Definitely. Um, the one thing that I did not mention, um, before I started working for the company that I work for now, or before I actually got into my field of computer engineering, I worked for the, for non, the nonprofit sector for... 15 years. Okay. And, yeah. <laughs> and in that, that those 15 years, I've learned how to make relationships, meaning to get to those individuals that know are going to support me and help me to support my organization. So when it came down to a day, we call this day in Georgia, Georgia Gives Day, where we actually raise money for the different nonprofit organizations in Georgia. And so when it came down to me asking individuals for money, it wasn't a hard thing because I made that relationship with those individuals. What I do see differently in the corporate sector that I'm in now, you can make relationships, but it's not as as deep as it was when you're dealing with a nonprofit organization. So, for example, if I ask for somebody to donate to my nonprofit organization, they'll be like, oh, sure, no problem. Like, perfect. We'll go ahead and do that. But in a corporate sector, I think the thing is when you ask someone to donate to a nonprofit, you have to give them a reason why. Mm -hmm. And give them the reason why they're actually giving to that nonprofit. They don't really understand your passion. And so I think the thing with boundaries is you have to be careful on how you actually relay the message versus how you relate the message to the nonprofit partner, how you relate to the message to the actual corporate um, representative that you're working with. Um, networking is a great thing. 
But at the same time, we have to keep in mind that we want to be better for ourselves and how we can prove ourselves to that person. Awesome. That's good stuff. Messaging. That's huge. Sometimes <laughs> we, we might send the wrong message with what we say or don't say, right. um, depending on how people approach us as well. So that's good stuff. Yes, ma'am. Um, all right. So you are still in travel mode because of the nature of your work. Yes. <laughs> are toggling between traveling or being, um, you know, in a more traditional work context. Mm -hmm. Some people are working more virtually. Yes. Um, what are some things that you think college students or early graduates can start doing now to practice setting boundaries in their personal and professional life? Um, they like, definitely need to understand to be flexible because we have a lot of jobs that actually, it may not say in our job description, but if it helps us to become a better person and a better person that fits that role, go ahead and take that on because that's going to make you become something better. Um, I recently earned my uh, Six Sigma yellow belt, and that's something that a business major would get. But here I am, a computer engineering major, getting a yellow belt. And a lot of people are like, well, why did you get your yellow belt? But that's something that is going to help me to advance myself and to help me advance my skill level in helping my team. And so I definitely um, think that a lot of young people that are coming out of college now, they need to be flexible on what it is that they're doing. Um, another thing is le definitely look at the different things that you can do to advance your skill level in what it is that you're doing. So say, for example, you have a computer engineer position. How can I definitely work to not only be a computer engineer, but have that business mindset as well? Um, I, I tell a lot of people, I'm going to get as many certifications as I can right now. I have two, but I'm working on more as we speak, because I'm always advancing my mind and I'm always learning because everything is changing. Technology is changing every single second. It's changing right now. So one of these days, it's going to be no more Facebook. What's next? You're right. You're right. I'm going to reserve my comments about Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. I love that. Like staying flexible is a big part of boundary setting in your professional life because sometimes we go in and we see, okay, this is the job. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's some other duties as assigned. The other duties as a sign that, you know, hopefully you have a good manager that will tell you this. But if you don't, is to soak up as much knowledge as you can mm -hmm. while they're paying. Right. Mm -hmm. Like they're covering the cost of those certifications or helping. Yeah. Them. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? That's, exactly. that's giving you free money. That's free yeah. game. That's what I free game for yes. later. So that's my company cool. gives us a stipend for our, our education. We get at least I think it's uh, twelve thousand dollars. Oh, my gosh. That's yeah. Exactly that's awesome so i definitely like if somebody's company does that definitely go back to school get a master's get a doctorate take advantage of that because they're paying for you to go take take it <laughs> okay all right i'm gonna check the question box and see if okay. we have this come in sure all right one person said while protecting yourself how should you engage positively with coworkers? Be honest. Um, if you find something that you don't agree with, you know, let that person know. So that way you can be aware. They can be aware of how to take on your personality, how to what, what buttons not to push. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely would say be honest, because at the same time, you want to make sure that that person is aware of what's important to you, what's not important, what buttons not to push, what buttons to push. Mm -hmm. I would say be honest. Be honest is, is really key. OK. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. Let's see what other questions we have coming in. Sure. Okay. While we're waiting for a few more questions to come in, I'm going to take a notes while you're chatting because you're dropping gems for real. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I want to go back to the everybody is not your friend. Gotcha. <laughs> I've got to go back. Okay. I've got to okay. go back. Everybody's not your friend. Uh, have you personally or people that are close to you experienced a situation in the workplace where you know somebody might have been you know doing the hardcore press of oh i want to be your friend i want to get to know you i want to know everything about you i gotta know everything about you or i can't work with you you Definitely. know have Definitely. you felt that and how yes. did you not it? um the, the so w this did not happen in my corporate sector this happened in the nonprofit sector um what happened was someone the person kind of Okay, how can I say this correctly? <laughs> oh, is real talk. So I know, right? <laughs> the person got on my bad side, needless okay. to say. And 
when I got on my bedside, they got on my bed list. And so the person, when I transitioned out of that nonprofit role into my corporate role, there's always a, there's a quote that says, oh, when, when somebody is, when you're, when somebody is applauding, watch who's not applauding. Mm. And so that person wasn't applauding, wasn't, wasn't excited about my transition out of that role. And so it kind of made me feel like, okay, you were all gun ho for me. You like rooted me on. But when that happened, yes, that's what it is. Exactly. When, when, when I moved out of that position, that person was just like, I don't want to deal with you no more. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Yeah, it was, it was bad. It was bad. But what I've learned was another quote, you kill them with kindness. Mm-hmm. So I go to that person I'm like, hey, how you doing? You know, you're having a great day. I'll give that person something for his or her birthday. Make sure that I know that I'm thinking about them. And the great thing about it is when you do that, they see, they see that you care. They see that you still want that relationship that you had with them. Mm-hmm. And from that experience, we, we've gotten closer as a result of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it hurt for a little bit, but I had to grow up about it. I had to be the 37-year-old Christian and just ugh, go on with it. So, yeah. Yeah, we're real uncomfortable for a second. <laughs> I'm sure it can be really uncomfortable because you don't, I mean, even right, like in our personal lives, when people are operating and you don't quite know what their motivations are, it's, mm-hmm. it can feel hard to navigate a space that feels like there's no trust, like yes. you don't know what their motivations are, you don't yep. know what's happening, but especially at work. But, you know, something you said about uh, killing with kindness, you don't have to. You know, my girl Michelle Obama said, when other people go low, you don't have to go down here. Especially at work. Because, yeah. like you said, you were moving on to another position. Mm-hmm. Okay. But p- things always come back around, especially oh. when you might not expect, right? So, right. whether or not that person actually like matures or not, you mm-hmm. maintain your own reputation and how yes. you want to move and operate matters so much because. Exactly. There's nothing else you said. I wrote it down. <laughs> We're always watching you. Always. Always. Yes. That's huge. I think people really underestimate that. Yeah. You know, it's not just the people you're trying to network with or your supervisor or whoever. Mm-hmm. Your peers, you never you never know how yep. that's going to back around in your in your professional life, especially. So and the one um, thing that I that I, I teach a I teach my uh I teach Bible study at my church. I teach the teens. Mm-hmm. And I tell them all the time, I say, someone is always watching you. I say, y'all are watching me. That little boy is watching you. That little girl is watching you. Whatever you're doing, make sure that you're setting an example. And I tell them that all the time. If they go somewhere else outside of the church or they go to another classroom, the one thing that I always say is set an example. Mm-hmm. That's all. I, that's that's I, they they would tell you that right now. They'd be like, Miss Christian, say set an example. So, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's good. That's my words. Yeah. Okay. Tell me about a time that, you know, it might not have been you. It might have okay. been you or someone else, you know, where they really fumbled on setting some professional boundaries. It could be in the interpersonal department. It could be in terms of setting boundaries about workload, right? Like it could be a number of things, like where you've seen somebody fumble and how it impacted them. I could use a great example because I'm actually – I'm not going through it, but my I have a colleague that's going through it. Um, the project that I'm on right now, we have someone that is not here that is a very key player in the in the in, in the actual project. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, Thursday I have to do a presentation about the project, mm-hmm. but the person that is a key player in the project is not speaking about the project. But that's the project manager, so they know everything about the project. Okay. So. She felt some kind of way when it came down to, okay, well, we want Kristen to present. We don't want you to say anything. I'm like, whoa, wait, this is her project. This is her project. Like, she needs to say something. And so the boundaries that she set, she was just like, you know what? You got it. I'm going to be able to help you out. I'm going to make your slide deck for you. I'm going to make sure that you have everything that you need to be successful. And so the thing about it is she's helping me to become a better me so that way I can be able to go on and be better at what I'm doing right now. So, mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. That's huge. Uh, being able to not take things personally, I think 
is a big part of boundaries right. that work because people slip up real quick and think yeah, that cool. assignments are a personal thing. And some, I mean, if you have a really toxic manager, I think mm-hmm. we have an episode about toxic workplaces coming up. But okay. you know, for the most part, uh, if you assume positive intent, mm-hmm. it's probably not personal. It's okay. like, listen, let's spread the load of this work. Let's give people the opportunity to stretch their skills to do something they might not normally do, which will help right. them in terms of their growth, but it also helps the bench strength of the team. Exactly. Yes. So, okay, that's huge. Yep. All right, I'm looking at the chat. All right. Somebody in the somebody in the chat earlier said they used to work at a place that would crack open beers at the end of the day in the building. Oof. I couldn't do that. Oh my God. That's <laughs> deep. Yeah. Wow. That's becoming yeah. increasingly common too with some well I know. I'm just like oh. a lot of organizations will uh you know, especially in sort of the tech startup space, want to have a great place to work ratings. And so mm-hmm. they want to put a basketball court, a bar cart, a cafeteria, <laughs> some wow. be- beds so you can take a nap, you know. Wow. So I think students are, you know, moving into workplaces where the the what I call the old school way of being really clear on what's work and what's not mm-hmm. gets real blurry. Yes. So mm-hmm. I think the topic is very timely. Yes. Okay, so here's a question. Mm-hmm. What about, so I know earlier you said um, when you're representing the organization, you're representing your person and your people, but specifically for the organization, uh, what are some areas, whether that's online or off, that, you know, or experiences, like I think a couple of folks were talking about conferences and holiday parties in the chat. Mm-hmm. What are some places in real life or digitally that people need to be mindful of representing their organization positively. So right now, being that we're dealing with COVID-19, it's going to be totally digital. You know, we have to remember that, hey, if we're on another call or we're, like I use a great example. My best friend talked to me today and we we're talking about having lunch, like a working lunch while you're actually doing a Zoom meeting. Um, that's the one thing we want to keep in mind. Um, put yourself on mute, take it, turn your camera off. Um, I've seen a lot of the clips where people are doing something else and not paying attention to their Zoom meetings. So I think it's important that now in, in today's world, being that we're all virtual, well, some of us are all virtual. I think it's important that we do it on our, um, our virtual aspect because right now, you know, sometimes I can give you a good example. When I have a meeting, I always try to wear something that has my company name on it if I'm meeting with someone else. Or if I know that I'm meeting with a client that is interested in joining our organization, I always wear something that says my company name. Uh, When I'm having a Nesby meeting, I have a Nesby t-shirt on just to let them know like, hey, I'm gun ho about you joining this organization. What can I do to make you join it? You know, and they can see my passion about it as well. That's pretty cool. I love that. I love that. Um, I try to do that like in my, you know, in my last role or mm-hmm. in my, I guess my role, uh, with, <laughs> you know, when I was on the road pre pandemic, I would often mm-hmm. wear like a, a special lapel pin mm-hmm. or scarf on my bag with my alma mater's yes. mascot, you know, because okay. if, you're, if you're really, especially on a role that in a role that's externally facing like yours, yes, trying to, you know, convert clients, we can call it what right. we want, right? Whether you're fundraising. Right sales, whatever, if you're engaged mm-hmm. with external constituents and you're trying to transform their experience in some way, mm-hmm. you know, those little those little uh, things that nobody tells you to do, they matter. They matter and people will remember. Yes, so that's exactly. you. You can put your own kind of flavor on it too, right? Yep. Like, yep. Um, I love that. Thank okay. you. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, the Access Point is part of the Living Corporate Network. Uh, we meet weekly. We have a new theme every week. We have a new guest every week. If there are topics that you all want to see that you haven't yet, please let us know. You can follow Living Corporate on social media um, at Living Corporate. I believe our team will drop it in the chat uh, so folks can go and follow, share some of the gems that you've heard tonight. Um, 
Kristen, I want to ask you one, maybe one final question. Yeah, what's we'll that? All right. So, as early career professionals um, are thinking about creating effective boundaries, what is one thing, if nothing else, that they walked away that they walk away from this conversation with? Who? With one thing, what would it be? Oh, let's see. I'm gonna go back to what I started with. Everybody's okay. not your friend. Oh. <laughs> you gotta have those that that have your back, but at the same time, be careful with that. Um, yeah, I just I just stick to that. Cause my mother, that's just something my mother always taught me. She's like, Kristen, everybody's not for you. Everybody's not gonna be, you know, rooting you on. Um, but you you have a select few, and I'm gonna be honest with you. On my cell phone right now, I have three in my top favorite, and that's it. And it's my mom, my first lady of the church, and my brother. That's it. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. But none of those are coworkers, though. <laughs> mm -mm. And another thing, another thing that I've that I've done, if you have it on your phone, turn on your do not disturb. <laughs> that's a really good boundary. We should have talked about okay. Maybe I got one. Okay. So the do not disturb. Talk uh -huh. to me about uh, how you navigate notifications when it comes to your email, your phone, text messages. Now companies are using Slack, GroupMe, yeah. everything. Wow. Right? So yeah. how, how, when you're thinking about college, you, mm -hmm. some of us, when we were in college, we weren't necessarily doing all that stuff. Yeah. You, you know, you step into work and there's all these different communication channels. Yes. How, students be thinking about, you know, making sure they're navigating and like if plugging into the channels because they are important, but not being overwhelmed by them because it can get gotcha. overwhelming. Gotcha. Um, I know Do Not Disturb is an awesome feature. Um, the one thing that I have a bad habit with, um, I have clients that are in Los Angeles. So mm -hmm. when it comes down to emails, my email stays on my phone because I got to I got to stay in in tune um because i i have a client for example i had a client email me on sunday and usually i, I don't sometimes I don't answer my emails but my thing is i love my job so much and i love the people that i work with so much meaning not my co-workers i love my co-workers but <laughs> the people mm -hmm. that i want to succeed in using this application i'm going to answer it regardless um my do not disturb comes on at one o'clock in the morning but I've had people, yeah, it's kind of late. I have people that can bypass that do not disturb. And those are those three people, my mom, my first lady, and my brother. Um, and then I'll get up in the morning and I'll check my um, I'll check my my messages. My do not disturb doesn't come off until eight o'clock. So uh, yeah, <laughs> she's like, okay, okay, let's go. But yeah, comes on at one, goes off at eight, and then I'll dedicate some time and I'll go ahead and answer those emails. But if it's before one o'clock and I see that email come through. Being that I love my job so much, like I said, and I want those individuals to succeed, I'm going to answer it. That's just me. I've always been like that. Um, I worked at our housing and residence life when I was on campus at Tulane. Uh -huh. When my boss needed something, I answered. You know, I was like, hey, what you need? I'll be able to take care of that for you. That's all I know. All I know is hard work. Okay. That's, that's tough, right? Because I do believe in some work ethic. And <laughs> when you're thinking about boundaries, you have to... I think whatever it is, I think intentionality is key. It's not a one size fits all. Some people are very rigid with their look. Nine to six, I'm yeah. I'm available. After that, I'm not. Yeah. There might be seasons in your life where you're on because you're trying to grind, you're trying to mm -hmm. you're trying to get that next stretch promotion. But <laughs> intentionality is really key in communicating. Right. So like I do, I do I do use do not disturb, and there's a short list of people that can get through. Exactly. <laughs> Really thoughtful about protecting my weekend time. Like if it's not, I need to not. I'm trying to keep my daughter off camera. <laughs> uh oh, all <laughs> oh, grace, don't do it. Oh. If it's uh, if it's not like she's not fully she's not fully dressed, so we need to keep her off camera. But <laughs> uh, boundaries, okay. So if it's not uh, something that's mission critical for the for the work, if it can wait later, that's something that yeah. In the middle of my career, I started getting more hip to because I was approaching burnout. Gotcha. So sometimes those boundaries we're setting for other people at work, sometimes we're setting them for ourselves and we mm -hmm. have to honor them because if we don't, then it can spiral out of control really quickly. Yes, it can. So that's good. That's good. Yes. Yep. All right. 
Okay, Kristen. Well, how can, if folks want to stay in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? Can they find you on LinkedIn? Yep. Find me on LinkedIn. It is uh, linkedin.com backslash Kristen Taylor. Um, Facebook, I am there, but you can't find me. <laughs> um, I am on Instagram as I am C Renee. Um, that's spelled I, I A M C R E N E E. Um, you have to request to actually put my information in there because I'm, I have a private profile. Uh, let's see what else am I on? Yeah, that's pretty much it, the three social medias, but, um, if, if, if someone wants to email me, you can email me at my first name. Remember the letter R, Taylor at gmail.com. And yeah, that's it. But I'm, I'm open to any questions, any other um, experiences like this. So I want to definitely thank um, you all for definitely having me. I really enjoyed my time here. Um, and I look forward to doing this again. Because I, like I said, I like to engage with young people and I like to help individuals become better individuals. Awesome. Kristen, well, I know I deeply appreciate your time. I've learned some things um, and I know all the students on the call have too. Sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> it's okay. We're going to send out the recording after <laughs> session to everybody that registered. So you may get some uh, messages from folks on LinkedIn that weren't on okay. tonight. But I okay. deeply appreciate you joining us for the access point. Um, I wrote down so many notes. Everybody's okay. not your friend. Keep in mind that you represent your organization. Yes. Manage your own risk and reputation. Yes. Um, be flexible with your growth. Be honest with people. But also take note that when everybody's applauding, it's good to pay attention to who's not. So I got some other stuff. I'm not going to read it all. But okay. listen, Kristen, you dropped some gems. We appreciate you. Living Corporate appreciates you. Yes. Um, everybody, thank you for joining. We'll see you next week. Same time, same place, new topic. Awesome. Have a good all night. Right. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Living Corporate is a podcast by Living Corporate LLC. Our logo was designed by David Dawkins. Our theme music was produced by Ken Brown. Additional music production by Antoine Franklin for Musical Elevation. Post-production is handled by Jeremy Jackson. Got a topic suggestion? Email us at livingcorporatepodcast at gmail.com. You can find us online on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and living-corporate.com. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned.